morning, ladies and gentlemen. Dorothy here from CCMA. You're very welcome once again to our CCMA community chat this morning. Uh, delighted, as you'll see on screen, to welcome Daniela Illuminati and Roger Clancy from Voxpro. Uh, and obviously, as always, me from WSI was here to support morning. us. Uh, good morning, everybody. Guys, we're going to give everybody about two minutes, just to the usual, just to log in. As always, because this is our Ask the Expert webinar, we really want to get as many questions in as possible, and we will be sticking very tightly to the 30 minutes. So certainly encourage you to get your questions in sooner rather than later. Um, but I know Daniela and Roger are gonna share their insights on how they have, I suppose, repurposed, or this new word that everybody's using, have pivoted uh, to a new way of working. Uh, it seems to be the buzzword at the moment, cocooning and pivoting. And um, so I know they're absolutely going to share their experience, but we really do want to make this interactive. So please do send through your questions and also just a reminder that we will be recording the webinar. So I see Declan, Nick, Paul, uh, Vicky, Caroline, Darren, welcome all. I see people are logging in the whole time. So great to see so many of you here this morning. Uh, so just to briefly uh, explain, I know Roger and is going to give an overview of Oxpro for those of you who don't know it. I know many other companies in the BPO space are on the call this morning and delighted to see you all there because I know as a, an industry sector, you all work together and, and, and support each other. Um, but uh, I will, what I'll do now is I'll hand over to Roger. I'll let you give an overview, Roger, and let you go through the presentation. And as I say, please send through questions. For those of you who haven't been on the webinar before, you'll see the little box to the right-hand side of your screen where you can submit a question. So we'd be delighted for you to do that. So Roger, Daniela, hand over to you. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Dorothy. Really appreciate the opportunity and uh, the chance to talk to, to the team. For those of you that um, don't know Voxboro, Voxboro is um, a BPO, uh, most recently been acquired by Telus International. And what you'll see in the coming uh, weeks and months is that we'll be uh, rebranded to Telus International, uh, based in uh, Cork and in Dublin. Um, you know, we support a lot of the fast-growing tech companies, um, and uh, we have approximately about 2,000 uh, team members uh, in Ireland. Um, and uh, you know, this has been probably uh, one of the most difficult uh, challenges that we've had at the start of the, of the year particularly around the pandemic and, and the reaction that we've had uh, with regards to uh, to working at home and, and to making sure that we maintained um, the support for our, our customers and partners. Uh, also on the call, we have Daniela Illuminati. Uh, Daniela is our head, um, uh, a site lead in, in Dublin, and she runs that operation there uh, for, for Telus International now. So, Without further ado, I'm going to just go straight into the, the first slide. So, Neve, if you can go into the first slider, please. Okay. I think the first slide here is just to, uh, to give you an idea of the, the CX evolution. And what we want to try and do here, before we actually divide, div, our, div, dive into the conversation, particularly around the transition to remote working and how we manage it here today, um, which we call day two. So within TELUS International, we refer to working remotely as day two. I wanted to, um, you know, I thought it was good to set the scene by considering the wider CX landscape, uh, which is the which is the context in which we've been operating uh, up to the pandemic. The, the CX function and overall industry have witnessed many evolutions over the past number of decades from the establishment of the traditional call centers to the shift into the omni-channel uh, customer engagement in more recent times. Uh, the advent of automation, the artificial intelligence and machine learning has had a profound impact on the CX industry in the last few years. And these technology advancements have been gradually changing the way in which CX activities uh, have traditionally operated. Uh, this is particularly true and relevant for those players in the CX industry who operates in the onshore locations like Ireland, and um, where easier access to highly educated talent uh, and disruptive technologies has helped us to create the optimal ecosystem for the development of more complex, advanced and efficient customer interactions. If you go to the next slide, Neil. So, this digital transformation has been a key enabler in the evolution for the more traditional contact centers to the newer remote working models that some early adopters have been familiarizing with in the last few years. 
by embracing the advent of, of remote working in the CX space, Ireland has the unique opportunity to strengthen its position as the location of choice for companies looking to expand um, existing operations or establishing new operations to support their CX uh, operation. So based on a study conducted in Ireland in 2018, experts had estimated that by 2025, a large part of the workforce will be working from home and remote working would significantly rival fixed office locations. Little did we think it was going to happen so soon. Uh, the CX industry have already progressed uh, towards remote working solutions before the pandemic. However, years of gradual transformation were fast-tracked and squashed in the last few weeks, which of course created its own challenges. Our team was very, our team had very little to figure, uh, little time to figure out what otherwise might have been, um, you know, months to research, uh, ponder, and carefully plan. In the two to three weeks leading up to the government announcement on May, uh, on March 27th, uh, we had been frantically preparing our teams and our partners by setting the expectations of the high level restrictions up to the closure of our offices. While putting in place social distancing in our offices and implementing a lot of the preventative measures to minimise the risk of contagion for our employees, we were working relentlessly at defining the remote uh, work policies, aligning with our partners on risk and liability agreements as part of the work from home BCP and figuring out the wide range of logistics that was needed to be put in place in order to mobilise all of our workforce um, to work from home. In those intense weeks, we concentrated a lot of our efforts into protecting our people in terms of their personal safety as well as their job security. And that was really important, and particularly from an engagement point of view with our team. Uh, we really doubled down on communications, uh, established a robust cadence that allowed us to keep our team members informed step by step about the development of a very fluid situation. Uh, we had to align to the Irish government recommendations and their directives while defining what they would mean in terms of managing our workforce. Uh, we leverage an internal platform um, powered by an Irish company, uh, WorkVivo. Uh, internally, we call it Box Pop, and, and this was used then to keep a constant communication channel open with our team members who are able to access it at any time, anywhere. And, and they loaded this app on their personal devices, which was very helpful for us for those people who weren't accessing uh, their work equipment. So therefore we could keep continuous uh, updates to them. Uh, we constantly reviewed a comprehensive set uh, of FAQs. This was absolutely key. Uh, primarily they were to alleviate confusion, anxiety while addressing the concerns of internal changes as we went through the work from home transition and um, which happened at different stages uh, for our different partners. So we had to negotiate with our partners as to when they were prepared or willing to allow us to uh, to, to, to work from home. So talking uh, of our clients, we can say that this experience has strengthened our partnership as we work closely with each of them to deliver a work from home solution that continues to support their customers by protecting our team members. The most contentious part of the transition was trying to convince our clients IT and security teams to provide their approval to work from home. Data security and the physical security that we're used to were high on the agenda and they probably felt pushed into a solution um, before the alternative, uh, because of the alternative consequence. However, in most, the totality of cases in Ireland, um, we were able to align to solutions that our clients deemed satisfactory, which allowed us to successfully redeploy our team members to work from home in record time. To give you an idea, you know, we we actually had 770, which is 30%, 37% of our team members across six different accounts were deployed in four business days between March 16th and 19th. And then 1,200 of our team members, which is 57%, were deployed between the 23rd and 29th of March. So what I'd like to try and do, if you think of with, you know, maybe 2,000 team members trying to deploy them over a very short window, we actually had to put together a supply chain that allowed us to be able to bring 100 
uh, team members once they finish their shift uh, to come and collect, sign, approve, and um, you know we had to uh, take the asset tagging of all of our devices per person and assign it to them. So I'd like to show you just a quick video in terms of how we actually pull that together. So uh, Neve, is there any chance you can put that uh, video yeah, together now? No. So right now, what I'd like to maybe do is just to ask Daniela to maybe talk to you what we refer to internally as day two, which was assuming now all our team members have actually been uh, working from home. So over to you, Daniela. Thank you, Roger, and hello, everyone. Um, so thank you for showing that uh, the, that video, Neve, because uh, it's a really good representation of uh, the monumental efforts that went into moving almost 2,000 people to work from home. After that was completed, though, it was time for us to reshift our focus uh, to what we uh, refer, uh, refer to as day two, which is basically all that needed to be defined in terms of departmental uh, and cross-functional processes that had to be adapted to the new landscape of having an entire workforce now uh, working remotely. So we're talking about redefining and adapting HR policies and processes, rethinking our IT support from a software and hardware perspective, as well as accessibility to internal systems and that support. Uh, we're thinking also about redefining the L&D approach, recruitment and onboarding strategies, and everything else that you can think about. So all of these pieces had to be reviewed one by one, but also considered as a whole to ensure that the company's internal cogs were working properly and that we, were ha we had a well-oiled machine in the remote uh, model. So based on the revised policies and processes defined by a cross-functional team working on the day two plan, uh, the operations then were able to define their remote, uh, their remote work standard operating procedures, uh, which created that rigor that was needed in, in the day two and uh, a standardized approach on how to manage our operations and also in general our, our workforce. Um, our global L&D team also um, had been working in the background to develop in record time a completely new knowledge base which is focused on the needs of dispersed teams uh, which is a myriad of useful best practices and pieces of information uh, from the from the industry that helped our team members not only like frontline team members but also our leaders to uh, adapt uh, on how to operate in their remote work model and we were also able to leverage a lot of the resources and expertise shared during this CCMA series, for example, um, which was a great enabler to bring together our community and share best practices that we have incorporated as well in our own internal practices in uh, Vox Pro powered by Telus International. Um, if you can go to the next slide, Ni. Um, so our, our leaders uh, have had to uh, adapt to a new way to communicate with their team members, which requires a lot of small touch points throughout the day and the week uh, that need to be deliberately engineered in our daily and weekly structure in order to create those otherwise spontaneous connections uh, that uh, normally happen in the work environment. 
So we really put a lot of emphasis on those macro connections with our teams to borrow uh, a, a term that uh, John Riordan used in one of these events. Um, that, uh, and, and these are really the foundation for a continued and strengthened company culture that we want to continue to nurture. And in fact, one of our learnings so far is that culture, the fact that culture is king, has never been truer than now. Um, because it's really the premise for successful dispersed team, um, binding them together beyond the current spatial barriers that uh, we're living in. And we also learned that uh, in, a remote working, uh, in a remote working environment, there's no such thing as over communication. And you might have heard this concept over and over again uh, in various, um, various webinars and articles about the topic. But I think that what's really important, uh, uh, the, the point that really stands out about communication uh, is um, the fact that we need to make sure we're using the right communication tools and the right platforms um, based on the various situations and scenarios that we're using them for. So um, more than like over communicating, really choosing the right communication tools based on the specific situations. Um, and this is also the type of guidance that we've been given to our leaders to help them adapt and excel in their role when managing remote teams, which may be a completely new experience for a lot of, of the leaders in our organization. And while the essence of performance management uh, does not change um, as great leaders should always manage output versus presence. What's, uh, what needs to change um, is the way leaders interact and communicate to, with their team when not sharing the office space. So in the new virtual environment, a culture of trust is even more crucial than uh, in the traditional office space relationships. And when trust is broken, the consequences are the same, regardless of where the team member is located, office or home. So now more than ever, our team members need to feel that they can count on strong leaders to be able to navigate the new challenges of an accelerated mobilization to remote work and create the right environment for them to thrive in their job. And what we think are a few elements that can make a right environment for our team members. We, we pointed a few here. Um, so. Um, for example, social, social connection. Uh, the fact that not every touch point with our team members needs to be business related. We need to always remember the fact that any professional relationship is founded on a solid personal and social relationship first. And with that in mind, we need to create that space for, for those um, social interactions to happen as well as the, the, con the normal um, meetings that we would have otherwise with our team members. Another crucial point is uh, setting and having for ourselves also clear expectations about what uh, our role uh, and uh, our, about our role and our, uh, our team members' roles and how we interact with each other and with our leaders. And another final point that we'd like to make is uh, in this um, remote ecosystem, the importance of um, clearly making that connection between the actions, the initiatives, the business decisions and objectives that um, we share with our team members to a higher level purpose as a company, which is creating a beautiful customer experience for disruptive, disruptive businesses we partner with uh, at TELUS International. And with that, I'll uh, move it to uh, next slide and to Roger. Roger, can I come in with just a, a couple of questions there, if that's okay? Yeah, work away. Sure. Um, so firstly, I know you mentioned there an application. I, I've actually seen something on, in the press about this reason, this work vivo, just exactly what that is. So one of the, the things is that it's it's an app that we have. It's very similar to what people would use, let's say, for social social media, for you know Facebook, Snapchat, but it's specific to and uh, to TELUS International. Uh, pre previously, Vox brought, brought it in, and now we're rolling it out across all the TI sites globally. And um, we 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 decided to do something like that because uh, we had some outages uh, previously from a BCP perspective, 
And uh, what we found was it was very difficult to connect with people. Um, if the, if we didn't have uh, their numbers, others didn't really want to make their numbers available or didn't want to be contacted. And so this was a social media uh, forum in which we could have um, make contact with different teams. It was also used as an engagement tool with our team members to talk about the social, talk about events, uh, talk about uh, um, the, the different programs and initiatives that we had. So for example, um, the kind of things that we would have done is that we would have actually made people aware of the different um, uh, decisions that were made by senior leadership. So we would have posted a senior leadership notification. We would have put uh, messages from our occupational health advisor uh, in terms of what the HSC, how we would interpret the HSC uh, information. We would have put in the senior leadership notifications for the FAQs. And we would have done that on the 16th of the month, the 19th of the month. It was always trying to uh, bring knowledge or the experience and, and share the comms. Uh, if people were off, they still got to, to, to be notified uh, of different events. Um, so like that's what the kind of stuff that we do. And another piece to that, um, Dorothy, for example, is we know today that uh, as a result of people working from home, that social isolation is now a problem uh, and it's something that we're challenging ourselves internally and um, we're running mindfulness uh, videos uh, you know and making them available for people we're looking at financial wellness uh, and how people can budget uh, we're looking at kind of things like uh, zoom fatigue how, how do we actually uh, bring that kind of activity to our people so it's that's the type of, of, of platform it is to help us communicate to our people and just a question from Paul that's actually linked to that. Uh, and he said, with a, str a historically strong engagement culture, how are you managing virtual fatigue through virtual engagement management communication, which is a challenging, a challenge facing all bi businesses during this time? So it's probably related to what you've just been talking it, about it, there. It, it, is, it is actually, yeah. Uh, so like what we're trying to do is we're trying to find programs or initiatives um, and, and encourage people. So as part of this link, pe people have an opportunity to comment, right? So it's not just purely a, a means of, of um, sending out information. People make comments, they like it, yeah? And, and what they do with that then is that you see a trend that within departments or within uh, groups or clusters of, of organizations that they actually embrace it and they share it. Um, and that's a, a, way, a way for doing it. For, for us, they, the key input, if you take what what uh, Daniela mentioned, is is that connection between the leader and the team member is absolutely uh, uh, critical, and that you'd have those touch points two and three times a day. Things that we would take naturally, that we would walk down a corridor if we were on site, and and making that connection with people, that that's easy. Now we have to engineer it. Now we have to make sure we have those touch points, and we feel if if the culture is there that people know each other and the team manager uh, is, is really accountable, not only for the performance, but the well-being of the individual as well, we feel that that connection, we should be able to tap in and understand whether or not there is a concern. If there is a concern, we have the employee assistance program. Uh, we have what we call mental health first aiders um, who are actually available. And some of these are peers of the team and if they're comfortable working and talking to these people that's great if not then we have the occupational health nurse that's available uh, to us and people can uh, reach out to those people directly and can i just go back you mentioned financial wellness so is that setting up webinars where people financial advisors are, are giving advice on budgeting and, and, and that yeah like and in, in, you know many of our team members would be you know, uh, they would have families, right? And their 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 partner uh, may have come against tough times, and maybe you know they have lost their job or they're being laid off. So I think those challenges do exist, and we're trying to help them uh, as as a group and how to how to 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 work through that. Great, thanks. 
And if I can add something about the engagement. So uh, part of that, those day two activities that were referred to earlier was also to um, basically transpose uh, a lot of uh, the uh, initiatives and plans that we had uh, company-wise for, for the year uh, in terms of our um, people, people uh, strategy and uh, uh, adapt those initiatives and those plans to uh, the new reality uh, of the fact that we're all working remotely for the time being and, and we don't know for, for how long. So we, we just like need to review all our plans working cross-functionally uh, and try to um, figure out either new ways of approaching the, those activities or uh, adding different creative activities to, to, to our people's strategy. Okay. I mean, this is the last slide, you might be all delighted to hear, but what we're trying to do now is to turn the challenge into an opportunity. And I think our intention within TELUS International is now to embrace the new work, remote work model uh, that COVID-19 has pushed on us and to use this uh, new model to actually enhance our product offerings uh, and services and consequently increase our impact and creating a beautiful experience uh, for our clients' customers. Uh, this is our time uh, to turn a challenge into an opportunity, and this is what we're doing. So based on the learnings from our mass implementation of a work from home model, and then utilizing the, our existing digital solutions, we have created a whole new product offering, uh, a service uh, offering, a stack around remote enablement, uh, and to meet the demands of an engaged remote end-to-end -end CX operation. Uh, we are therefore taking control through a proactive approach and putting our learnings and expertise and those digital capabilities at the disposal of our current and prospe uh, prospective partners in a comprehensive work anywhere solution. And we will provide uh, the, the link to that uh, website for people to, to view. So as we said earlier, this type of solution is particularly uh, palatable for onshore markets like Ireland, where the right ecosystem made of highly skilled workforce, advanced digitalization, and solid infrastructure does create those conditions for remote work models to be successful and excel. Remote work question, is- yes. Sorry, Go Roger. Ahead. Uh, question just in from Nick. How did you IP lock for 2000 remote users? How did we IP lock? So what we did was that, um, and I'm not an IT background, so, but what, what we did do is we worked directly with our, our, our partners and with those guys that um, in some cases the, the, the technology was owned and controlled by the partner themselves and therefore their network and infrastructure allowed us to use the, the, the cloud and they actually limited um, the, the, uh, the options for people to, to use, let's say, external sites. So we restricted the access mainly to uh, the platforms that they were working or the tools and um, that they needed to, to, to use. So like that's one of the things that we did. Okay, I'm conscious of time, Roger and Daniela. We've about two minutes left. I know you're on right. your last slide. This is the last one. So last please. So remote, in summary, right, remote work is here to stay. Uh, I don't think that is debatable. However, the models in which it will continue, especially in the CX world, maybe not be as black as white, but it will develop into a vast array of scenarios and solutions uh, in which we will flex and adapt uh, to serve our partners. And, and remember, these many of these will be bespoke solutions in the future. So with that, I, I think I'll leave it at that and maybe give an opportunity to, to ask some questions. Yeah, just a couple of quick questions. Are you planning for a return to the work for your workers? Are you planning that they will come back at some point? Or what's your, I know we're waiting for government direction, but what's what's your planning or thinking at this point? We're, we're of the opinion that, um, the, I, I think the, the longer we utilize and benefit from remote working, the better. And it would be our intention working with our partners to, to try and, and maximize that as much as we can. Um, we will be restricted. The expectation is that in order for us to achieve that two meter distance, social distance, then we will have to reduce the amount of people coming back in on site. And I would say that would be up to uh, 50%. We are very conscious of the yo-yo effect, right? Which is we bring people back. If we bring too many back and we do have an episode uh, or an outbreak, then that is having 
catastrophic effects on our, our, our partners' business. And therefore, they will be working with us uh, together to make sure that we limit any exposure uh, or if we lose any capacity. So I would say it's going to take some time. And I think it'll be, um, I think we will go back, but it will be very slow. And we'll be slower going back than we were trying to get out. And one last question I'll take, uh, Paul. So thank you for the answers and clarity. To follow up, how are you managing work-life balance for colleagues, ensuring the team and management are not being overworked with late logins or no switch off and maintaining rest periods if being communicated while offline? So I suppose that the, 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 bulk, the main the question is the work-life balance. And, and I know a lot of people are saying they find that, I know Annette said on the webinar last week that productivity has gone up since the people have started working from home now at the same time I know they've switched call, some calls to messaging so that was a factor as well but like yeah look, I, I think it's something that I mentioned earlier on about the, the team leaders trying to um, you know manage and have those uh, touch points and, and be very close to the team members I think to be honest you know many of our team members um, who have a particular shift in their schedule and um, they, they will work their shift I, I think my greatest concern personally is our support departments and the support teams and um, who are actually working harder. I personally have not probably enjoyed working from home because there's been no there's been no stop. It's just continuous throughout and, and it's been a really, really uh, uh, I suppose tough time for, for any leader to, to try and make sure that we maintain uh, the customers uh, and, and the clients uh, uh business and and also try and 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 and, and deliver the results but, but but what i would say is that um you know we have as leaders to make sure that we're looking out for our individual people and working very closely and acknowledge the work that they're doing and and force days uh off and and like that was one thing i did today with our heads of the department you know i'm actively encouraging and pushing for people to take a vacation I want them to take vacation. We'll get them to, to take X amount of days um, before now, between now and end of July. And I think that's how we, we will try and work with them. But it's certainly something that I'm very conscious of. Great, brilliant. Okay, uh, conscious of time, we've got a couple of minutes over. Uh, can I thank Daniela and Roger for a really great uh, presentation this morning. Remind everybody that a recording will be available. Um, and it's normally it's up late afternoon or else we, we'll have it there. Well, I know Monday's a bank holiday, it'll be Tuesday. And just to remind you, thanks for putting that up, Neve. Uh, we are yeah. running a competition, trying to bring a bit of fun into everything uh, where we're giving out a prize of a very cool poly savvy headset. I know Declan's on the call. So thanks once again to Declan for that. I'm wearing the one that they kindly gave me as a present today and it's brilliant. Uh, and we also, so we're looking for a shot or a video of your home office, something quirky, obviously, and also a, a, either a shot or a video of your team and how they're working remotely. And we have a couple of really nice prizes there. So please spread the word. Uh, sorry, I think I might see it might be a thank you or a question. No, Nick, Vicky has said thank you. Thanks for that, Vicky. So thanks, Roger. Thanks, Daniela. We don't have a webinar on Tuesday. We thought we'd give everybody a bit of a break after the bank holiday. Uh, but we will be back next Friday. Uh, I think a very appropriate webinar. We have Joe Walsh of Log Me In, who's going to be our expert next week. And I think we're all have got very qualified in uh, webinars and Zoom meetings in the last couple of weeks or months. Uh, and Joe is just going to give us some further tips on that. And Log Me In have been very good to the CCMA by giving us this platform for free, which we really appreciate. So that's Friday's one. Uh, and then we hopefully will have one midweek and I'll be sending out the details on that uh, on Tuesday. So everybody have a lovely bank holiday, Roger. Good to see you. Good to see you, Danielle and me. Thank Thanks you. as always. Uh, and take Thank care. You. Thanks a lot, everybody. Thank you. Take care. Thank bye, -bye. You. Take care. Thanks, Dorothy. Have a good weekend.